everyone. In the previous class, we had the discussion on the determination of the maximum support pressure and stiffness for uh, the support systems such as shotcrete and blocked steel sets. This was in connection with the rock mass tunnel support interaction analysis. I mentioned to you that there are many other type of uh, the support systems such as uh, ungrouted rock bolts, grouted rock bolts or cables or sometimes you have to provide uh, two types of support in combination. So, today we will learn about the similar analysis uh, for the ungrouted rock bolts, grouted rock bolts or cables and then we will take up uh, some cases where we will have the combined system. Then uh, we will see that how the stiffness and the maximum support pressure can be obtained for such type of support systems. So, the available uh, support for the ungrouted bolts, we will take this first. The available support for an ungrouted uh, rock bolt which is mechanically or chemically anchored in the rock mass. It depends upon the deformation characteristic of the anchor, washer plate and bolt head and the deformation of the bolt shank. So, before we understand about uh, these deformation characteristics of various components of the ungrouted rock bolt, let us first try to understand the various component of uh, such type of rock bolts. So, uh, let us take a look with the help of the figure that what all are the various components for this uh, ungrouted rock bolts. So, say we have the underground excavation which is circular in cross section and say that we want to go for the provision of the rock bolts in this direction. like this. So, let me try to draw a typical bolt and the other components. So, here at the top we have the bolt head tightened by the nut here. And of course, here you have the rock mass. So, at the end this is anchored. So, this is what is your rock mass. Then this is what is drill hole in which the bolt is uh, installed. So, here this is bolt shank. then the complete this assembly is bolt head this is washer and of course these are tightening nuts The circumferential spacing that is this one is S C. Coming to the length here we have C 
say this is uh, your total L and from here to here. This is what we call as anchorage length. So, these are the various components of an ungrouted rock bowl which is mechanically or chemically anchored in the rock mass. So, what we do is first we have a drill hole then the bolt shank goes inside that which is tightened at the surface of the excavated uh, uh, periphery or the opening with the help of bolt head. This is comprising of uh, the tightening uh, nut, washer and other related stuff. So, this L we call as the free length of the bolt. So, now we come to the deformation characteristic. So, as we saw that the rock bolts are comprised of bolt shanks mechanical or chemical anchorage and then we had bolt head which is comprising of washer plate and the tightening nut. Then few things which uh, we will need is the circumferential spacing of the rock bolt which is SC. I showed you in the previous slide that what it will be. Then longitudinal spacing of the rock bolts is uh, represented by S L that means the spacing of the rock bolt in the plane perpendicular to the plane of the screen. Now, the question is how to determine the capacity of the bolt. So, for this purpose uh, the typical uh, pull out load test results are shown for a mechanically anchored bolt. So, you see that the curve with uh, red color is the curve for entire rock bolt assembly. So, here we plot on the x axis the bolt extension and on the y axis it is the load in the bolt or we call it as a, a bolt load. So, we have uh, the two aspects. So, the first one is the elastic extension of the bolt shank and this is what is the influence of preload. This is the complete rock bolt assembly and the response that is bolt load versus the bolt extension. Now, here we take two points on the linear portion of the load extension plot. So, basically this is what is uh, the linear portion maybe to some extent. So, we choose these two points which are represented by u1 t1 where this u1 is the bolt extension corresponding to the bolt load of t1 and uh, when the bolt load is uh, t2 then the extension is u2. So, the as far as the bolt shank is concerned the respective uh, extension is u e b 1 and u e b 2. Then we have the maximum value of this bolt load which is nothing but T B F that I have shown here which is the ultimate failure load. So, this is how the results of a typical pull out test on a mechanically anchored rock bolt look like. So, once we have this can we find out the stiffness of the ungrouted rock bolts? Yes, we can and then what is the procedure for that? Let us take a look. So, we have the stress in the bolt shank. which is equal to T B divided by pi by 4 D B square where this D B is the diameter of the bolt shank. Then the strain in bolt shank 
this is given as u e b divided by l l i already told you it is free length of the uh, bolt and therefore we will have the modulus which i am representing by e b that is uh, stress upon strain which is going to be equal to i have 4 t b divided by pi d b square divided by strain so that is going to be l upon u e b so from here we can get u e b as 4 t b into l divided by pi d b square into e b this equation is equation number 9 this is in continuation with the previous class equation numbers so this u e b is the elastic displacement or the elastic extension of the bolt so can we find out the stiffness yes k of shank is equal to t b upon u e b this is equal to pi d b square into e b divided by 4 l now when we talk about the complete assembly see till now we found out k of shank that is bolt shank but then i mentioned to you that uh, not only shank but uh, you have the bolt head assembly which is uh, the washer plate and tightening nuts so how can we find out k of the remaining assembly so k of the remaining assembly this is going to be t b upon u a b this is equal to t 2 minus t 1 divided by u 2 minus u e b 2 minus u 1 minus u e b 1 we took uh, two points in the straight line portion and that we are using so we can say here that u a b is equal to q into t b this q is related to load deformation characteristics of anchor washer plate and the bolt head and how we define this q that is u2 minus u e b2 minus u1 minus u e b1 this divided by <coughs> t2 minus t1 let me make this as equation number 10 so uh, this is how that we can find out k of the remaining assembly now what will be the total load carried by the rock uh, bolt so that we will have as uh, the total load carried by rock bolt it will have two components the first one is the load carried by bolt shank alone plus we have the another component that is load carried by 
anchorage plus the bolt head. So, how should we get the total stiffness uh, that will be say it is uh, Kb. So, 1 upon Kb therefore is Sc into Sl divided by Ri into 1 into 1 upon K of shank plus 1 upon K of remaining assembly. So, if we just substitute this is going to be SC into SL upon Ri substitute the expression for k shank and k remaining assembly. So, what we will get is uh, 4L upon pi db square into eb plus I can write here directly as q. The expression of q was given as equation number 10. So, I will mark this as equation number 11. So, where your k b is the stiffness of mechanically or chemically anchored ungrouted rock bolt. Then SC as I mentioned already circumferential rock bolt spacing and SL is the longitudinal rock bolt spacing. So, this is how the stiffness of the ungrouted rock bolts can be determined which are mechanically or chemically anchored. Now, what is going to be the uh, maximum support pressure because for every support system we we need two things one is its stiffness and another one is the maximum support pressure that is available. So, in this case uh, the maximum support pressure which can be generated in a rock bolt system by deformation in rock mass uh, that is given as P s max is equal to T B f upon SC into SL. Recall what was TBF that was the failure uh, load or the ultimate load. So, I will mark this equation as equation number 12. So, this uh, TBF here is the ultimate strength of the rock bolt system from pull out test on a similar rock mass to that for which the rock bolt system is being designed. Now, this gives rise to the sudden failure or the brittle failure, sudden or the brittle. 
so basically uh, we need to go for pre-tensioning so uh, this is uh, pre-tensioning which is of the order of about 33 percent of the ultimate capacity of the rock bolt. So, this is how we can determine uh, the properties with reference to the ungrouted rock bolts in terms of its, uh, its uh, stiffness and the maximum support pressure. Now, we take the next one uh, which is the support that is being provided by grouted rock bolts and the cables. So, uh, when we discussed uh, this uh, rock support interaction concept, these are applied to the uh, support system which we discussed uh, till now that is short crete, steel sets and ungrouted uh, rock bolts. But then these cannot be applied to the grouted rock bolts or cables. Why? Because uh, such rock bolts they do not act independent of the rock mass and therefore, the deformation which occur both in the rock mass and the support system, these cannot be separated. So, the support action of the grouted rock bolts or the cables uh, arises from the internal reinforcement of the rock mass in much the same way as the presence of uh, reinforcing steel acts in the reinforced concrete. If you just uh, see that when we go for the reinforced uh, concrete, so basically along with the steel and the concrete they behave as one unit. So, their individual behavior it cannot be separated. So, the similar type of action happens or takes place here in case of the grouted rock bolts or cables where uh, this there is the internal reinforcement of the rock mass. So, what happens basically when you provide uh, such type of the system that is grouted rock bolts and cables. So, basically they knit the rock mass together by limiting the uh, separation of individual blocks. The grouted reinforcing elements these limit the dilation or the volume uh, increase in the rock mass immediately surrounding the tunnel. See what happens when you have the excavation immediately in the vicinity of that whatever is the rock mass it has a tendency to uh, increase in volume. So, immediately if you provide this grouted uh, reinforcing elements this dilation tendency is limited in the rock mass immediately surrounding the tunnel. Now, this uh, in turn has the effect uh, of limiting the extent to which the original rock mass material constant which were given by M and S they reduces to the broken rock mass um, parameters which are M R and S R. If you recall these M and S or M R and S R these are the parameters of the Hook and Brown criterion. So, what happens when you provide the uh, rock bolts or when you install the rock bolts, the rock mass quality overall it improves uh, uh, upon the installation of the rock bolts. Now, what happens because of uh, this let us uh, take a look. So, you have uh, this Q which got changed to maybe Q improved where this Q improved will be greater than Q. This Q is the rock mass quality before the excavation of the tunnel. So, this is characterized by these parameters M and S. Now, if you have another parameter Q prime, 
which represents the rock mass quality after excavation but before supporting that means before the installation of the uh, support system. So, in this case what will happen? This will be less than q of course, because uh, the excavation has been made. So, there is going to be the deterioration in the rock mass quality and since the support has not been provided. So, what we will get is q prime is less than q and therefore, we can say that mr and sr they will be less than m into s. So, uh, basically uh, this MR and SR will be less than M and S which was for the original rock. Now, what happens uh, after the uh, provision of the grouted rock bolts? Uh, the rock mass becomes reinforced. So, in that case, uh, your q which is improved this will be more than q prime. So, there is going to be the improvement in the values of m and s and let us say that they become m prime and s prime. So, what happens after the installation of grouted rock bolts? The dilation of rock mass is not possible. So, because of that what will be the result? Uh, there is going to be the increase in the strength of the rock mass surrounding the periphery of the cavity up to the distance which is equal to the total length of the rock bowl. Because basically with the help of this uh, rock bowls, the rock mass is knitted together or it is stitched together. So, we have the overall increase in the uh, characteristic of the rock mass. Now, what happens when you have the two types of the support system or when we talk about the combined support system? So, there the uh, example of such combined support system can be uh, say the combination of shotcrete plus uh, the rock bolt or maybe the concrete uh, layer and the rock bolt. So, how to handle such type of situation and what will be the stiffness when we go for the combined support system? So, uh, when you have the two support system and for example, let us take uh, that we have rock bolts and the shotcrete lining, they are combined in a single application. What does this mean? Uh, what does this mean is that you have the tunnel where you provide shotcrete lining as well as the rock bolts. So, here we assume that the stiffness of the combined support system is equal to the sum of stiffnesses of the individual components. So, let us say that we have rock bolts and the shotcrete lining. So, what will be the stiffness of the combined support system? It will be the stiffness of the rock bolts plus the stiffness of the shotcrete lining which we already have obtained individually. So, how we are going to write it. So, we have the combined stiffness which is uh, k prime that is equal to k 1 plus k 2 where uh, this k 1 is the stiffness of first system 
and K2 is the stiffness of second system. Here you need to take a note that both the systems should be installed simultaneously. So, we have to take a note here that two support systems are assumed to be installed at the same time. We need to keep this in mind. So, what will be the available support curve for the combined system? This is defined by uh, ui equal to uio plus pi into ri divided by k prime. You must be familiar with this expression. This we derived in the previous class where uio is the uh, initial deformation that is uh, allowed and k prime here is the stiffness of the combined support system. So, let us say that uh, if the steel sets are uh, provided along with the concrete lining, then what will happen? The maximum support pressure which is carried by the steel sets, it is much much larger as compared to the maximum support pressure which can be carried by the concrete lining. So, what? Then we need to see that therefore, then it will be very obvious that uh, the concrete lining will fail much before the maximum support pressure is reached in steel sets. And hence, this PS max of the concrete lining will be taken as the maximum support pressure for the combined support system. So, here I am taking the example of the concrete lining and the uh, bolts, but let us say if you have uh, any other type of or any other combination of the support system, please remember that whichever system has low value of the maximum support pressure that will be treated as the maximum support pressure of the combined support system. Now, the support systems which uh, take uh, quite long time to install are not suitable as an immediate support measure in the rock masses which are highly convergent and uh, also characterized by small stand up time. So, in such cases normally the shortcrete lining along with the rock bolts are uh, provided as the preferred uh, support system. And the cases where the tunnels are excavated in a highly squeezing ground condition, what we do is we first apply a shortcrete layer of about uh, 60 mm thickness. Uh, to keep the tunnel intact immediately after the excavation and then the rock bolts are driven uh, so that uh, the both the uh, support system that is shortcrete and the rock bolts they become an effective immediate support pressure and then we install the steel sets as a permanent support system. Now, if such tunnels are expected to carry the water under pressure, then what we need to do is we further provide uh, the concrete lining to make the tunnel surface smooth. So, that uh, when it is carrying the water, the forces which are generated with uh, the pressure that the water is exerting that reduces if the tunnel surface is smooth. So, the stiffness of the combined support system, uh, it is uh, comprising of the stiffnesses of the individual support system. Please uh, note this. So, this was all about that how the maximum support pressure for the combined support system can be considered and how we can determine the uh, stiffness. In the next class, we will study few more aspects related to the Ladani's analysis uh, uh, for the interaction phenomena 
of the rockmas and the tunnel support and we will also see that what all are the various uh, calculation steps and the sequence uh, all these things we will discuss in the next class thank you very much